We're going to find out who you really were next. The program you're about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled A Fresh Look at the New Creation. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News Program. We're doing a series entitled A Fresh Look at the New Creation. We have covered a lot of ground in this series already. If you'd like to go back and catch up with us, get the study notes on the home page of my website, A Fresh Look at the New Creation. You can download those for free. We'd love you to have a copy and follow along with the teaching. I've also got this entire series streaming. You can go to the free download section of our website and also uh, stream or download the audio in MP3 format and listen to it. And so you can get all this series and listen to it over and over again. It's my gift to you. All that's absolutely free. And so uh, and take a look at it. Our website's got a lot of uh, free materials. You can sign up for a, a free newsletter. You can go to my blog and, f and read articles that we've written. And there's just a lot of stuff to interest you. We've been accumulating content for the last few years. And I am just really happy with the, the it's like uh, the Lord just released a, a, a volcano worth of, of, of information. And we've been able to put out series after series. In fact, I've still got three or four more series that I haven't released yet that we want to get to on this program. And so um, thanks again. We're here in our new studio. We're so blessed to be here. I feel like this is a new platform for me to reach the world. It's just amazing for me to think that I can sit right here and reach the world. And it's because of the, the support of, of this audience and our partners. Thank you so much for helping us pay for this and have this new platform to operate from. So let's get into the teaching. Uh, a lot of, of previous points and scriptures brought us to this to, to this here today, but the uh, point we're going to make here today or look at is who you really were. And when we begin to see where we came from, who we were, and what God did to make us new creations today, all of those things help in establishing in us the reality of the new creation. I mean, it, it would be enough. Honestly, it would be enough if God said you're a new creation because I said you are. He could say that. We could lean on that. We could meditate on that. And that's, I mean, you get a word from God, that's enough. But He's given us so much more than that to look at. And each truth and revelation, they build on one another. And you, you begin to develop this, uh, this deep foundation uh, of your identity as, as, a, as a Christian, as a new creation. It's so much more than simply getting a pass to go to heaven when you accept Jesus or getting a free ticket to heaven. It, it's, it's just so much more than that. I feel sorry for people who don't uh, really look at the, the, the depth, the width, the height of their redemption, understand what some things that, that have happened in their lives, and then, you know, uh, take advantage of our rights and privileges, the authority that we have. I've got a whole series on authority that we're, that we're going, to, going to go to very soon. And, but all of it uh, builds on the fact that we are a new creation. We are the righteousness of God. We are what God wanted us to be. We, we aren't trying to become that. God made us what He wanted us to be. And, and, and having a, a firm understanding, a, a, a depth of understanding of that truth really is, is, a, is a building block or a cornerstone in, in the foundation of our theology that, well, let me put it this way. If, if you're trying to exercise authority or pray, you know, powerful prayers uh, or, or release your faith in some promise from God, and your foundation is faulty because you have a sense of unworthiness or guilt or shame or condemnation about something of the past, it's going to affect your ability to stand on the Word of God. It's going to affect your, 
your interaction with God and the devil and other people. And so uh, the word and our theology, it's a big word. I mean, it's just the way you see life, the way you see God, the way you see yourself. Those things matter when it comes time to fight and to stand on the word and fight the fight of faith. And so um, this series, hopefully, I mean, this will just nail that nail in the coffin and, and you will say goodbye to, to all those negative thoughts about yourself once and for all. And then we can move on into some other things uh, of doctrinally wise. But, but boy, we want to make sure that there's no lingering doubts about who you are in Christ Jesus. So to do that today, we're going to look at, before we tell you who you really are, Let's take a look at who you really were. And, uh, and we'll start in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So he pretty much puts us all in the same boat. And so in God's mind, there's only two kinds of people. There's sinners and there's saints. There's people who are unsaved and people who are saved. There's people who are in Christ and people who are outside of Christ. And this verse makes it clear that in the beginning, all have sinned. At one point, we were all in the same boat. And this makes it very helpful to preach the gospel to sinners uh, because we were all in that shape. We were all sinners. We were all uh, um, separated from God. We all know the sting of sin, the guilt that comes from sin, the effect of sin in our lives. And if God had not intervened, we would die sinners and we would be dead eternally. We would be separated from God forever, not ceasing to exist, but separated from God, separated from His presence and, and really spending an eternity in hell. Uh, Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to all men because all sinned. So once again here we're saying here's who we were. We were sinners. And if God hadn't done something, there was nothing we could do. And we were sinners because we sinned. We were sinners because uh, Adam sinned. And that sin nature was passed down to every generation. No one was without sin except Jesus. His father was not Adam. He wasn't a descendant of Adam. Uh, he was, his father was God. His mother was Mary. So Jesus was the only person born without sin. Now, Adam and Eve were created sinless, but it didn't take long, and they, and they dove headlong into sin. So sin has plagued the human race, not just plagued it, but marked it, changed it to where we were all sinners. When you understand the depth of sin, in other words, we're dealing with a, a righteous, holy God that does not tolerate sin or evil. It can't exist in His presence. So the object of His affection was mankind, and we were sinful. There was no way for God really to have any meaningful interaction with us once we became sinful. So you can see that it's not enough for us to try to change our affiliation or to change our behavior or, or change. we couldn't change our nature. We couldn't change who we were. We couldn't pay the penalty for our sins. So we were in a very impossible situation. Ephesians 2, 1 describes it this way, um, 1 through 3, it says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So you can tell by the way this is written that it applied to everyone. He didn't say some of you were dead in trespasses. No, he said you were, all of you were, dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So we were sinful, living in a sinful world, presided over by a sinful spirit, an evil spirit, and we were all going in the same direction, among whom also uh, we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature 
the children of wrath just as others. So we were called children of wrath. We were fulfilling the desires of the flesh. But we were by nature. Our nature was sinful. And it was, it was unacceptable to God, our very nature. Now, that's a real problem. <laughs> you know, when you go to school, you're a student, and then some students disobey, their behavior is unacceptable. And they're punished by whatever means. And hopefully their behavior improves so that they can get along with the rest of the students. And so we know when there's behavior that's acceptable. We know when there's behavior that's unacceptable. But when you talk about someone's nature, <laughs> it's not your behavior we have a problem with. It's you. It's the real you. You are evil. You are sinful. You, you, without Christ, before Christ, before you were saved, you, you were not acceptable to God, no matter what you did. And, and you could try and change your behavior, but that doesn't change your nature. And you, we read Romans 5.12. He's basically saying you were born like this. You were born into sin because you inherited it from your father, Adam. And, and so when you, when you see this reality, you understand how impossible it was for us as humans to get ourselves out of this, this, this mess that we were in. This, there was no way out. And so uh, Galatians 3 says it like this. Verse 21, Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. If there had been a law given which would have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. And uh, when, when you see the words law in the New Testament, he's talking, obviously he's talking about the Old Covenant and their system of doing things, all the laws that were written, uh, starting with the Ten Commandments and then all the 632 different laws that they had to abide by and if they broke the law they were guilty and they had to sacrifice animals to to cover their sins and so it was a whole system and he's and and they they were coming out of that during the time that the new testament was written and they were coming into this age of grace to the new covenant but for us today we don't we didn't come out of uh, the jewish legal system we were all Gentiles, most all of us, and uh, I don't know that any many Jews today live under that uh, the the law of the old covenant. But to make it more clear, it's helpful to say it this way: Is good works then is keeping good works against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been good works that could be done which would have given life, then righteousness would have been done, would, would have been by good works. Because it's the same, uh, it, it accomplishes the same thing. People working to please God or to be acceptable, religious works, religious thinking, so you have to work your way into a place of favor. That is the same thinking as they had under the law. So, Basically, what we're saying here is this. We were trapped in sin, and there was no amount of good works that we could do to get us out. There, there was nothing we could do. We couldn't die for our sins because our death had no value. We couldn't work to pay for our sins because our works were as, the Bible says in Romans 3, our righteousness was as filthy rags. So our, even our good works had no value. So there was no way to work our way into righteousness. And this is important. You say, well, what does this have to do with the new creation? I'm just telling you how impossible it was for us to be good enough to get by, to make it, to be accepted. It, it, we couldn't because it wasn't our behavior that God had a problem with. It was us. And so had, had God forgiven us of all of our sins and simply left us to live life after that, we would have just committed them all again because our nature was one of sin. And, and even if He forgave us of all of our sins and we, and we died right then, we still weren't acceptable to God because we were sinful. And our nature was one uh, that was, that was uh, 
that was evil. It, it was not acceptable to God. It had to be changed. Romans 3 verse 9 says, says, What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And so that's a great way to sum that up, is that even the Jews who had laws, it's, it's like they had an opportunity to, to do everything right, but he didn't, he, here he's saying not one of them made it. Not one of them reached that level of, of perfection that would be acceptable, acceptable to God. So even with all their laws and all their striving and all their zeal to keep the law, they were just as sinful as the Greeks. They are all under sin. There is none righteous, no, not one. So the conclusion is, and this is important, because of that condition and the hopelessness of it, the conclusion is this. We, as we were, had to die. We had to die. Our, our lives couldn't be rehabilitated restored, that we couldn't uh, work our way out of it. Not even God could take us and, and, and add a little goodness to us and, and make us worthy. Uh, we had to die. We, uh, and, and that's the conclusion you have to come to is that, um, let me give you scriptures. Uh, Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is not just get better, do better, try harder, do it again. Uh, learn from your mistakes and, and you'll be better next time. The wages of sin is not die and come back as another, you know, reincarnated uh, animal. And if you, you know, if you, uh, if, you, if you do a good job, you may not be a grasshopper or a roach. Maybe you'll be a cow or come back as a, as a, as a bird or something else. Uh, nope, nope. The wages of sin is death. I mean, it's the death penalty to the nth degree. You, it's not it's not life, <laughs> you know, with the possibility of parole. It's death. It's not life in prison, and then you're resolved. It's it's death. It it has to be done away with. It can't be fixed. You were beyond repair, and and that's important to realize that. It, outside of Christ, in our sinful condition, there was nothing we could do to make it better. We had to die. Ezekiel 18.20 says, The soul who sins shall die. And uh, you might think, well, that's, you know, that's pretty negative, and it is. I mean, it's, it's very, very, uh, it was a very big problem. And um, the point is, you couldn't be fixed. You had to die. God found a way so that you could die and be reborn. And uh, it's a miracle. It, it's, it's, a, it's the most amazing thing that happens on planet Earth right now. And that is for a person to, to die and be reborn. It's, um, it's called the new birth. It's called being born again, being saved, accepting Jesus. We have all these terms which we get from the Bible. But it describes a miracle that takes time to truly comprehend. And without the Word of God, you just wouldn't believe what God can do in the heart of a man or a woman who gives themselves to Jesus Christ. It's just, it's beyond words. But God can give us revelation and show us what He did. Now, let me make this statement. The purpose of your death was not for annihilation. In other words, God could have, I believe, he could have just said, enough. I will cause you to die and disappear. You will cease to exist in any form forever. Or, which is more likely, after creating Adam and Eve, after they had sinned, he could have stopped with them and said, you know what, you guys both are going to die in your sins and you're not going to have any children and we're going to stop this human experiment right now. Because what's going to come from you is going to be lots and lots of pain and suffering and, and, and a world filled with evil. And I'm going to get blamed for it. I'm not going to do it. I am not going to. I'm just going to kill you now. 
and we're going to start over with something else. God could have easily done that. He could have avoided 6,000 years of people blaming Him for what people have done. He told Adam and Eve not to sin. He's told every generation to live right. And they have, have ignored Him and spit in His face and, and, and refused to even acknowledge He exists and then live life on their own terms, suffered the consequences, and then some have the audacity then to blame God for their problems. And, and uh, the alternative would have been to destroy Adam and Eve or, you know what, never created a man to begin with. But then you and I wouldn't exist. And that would not be pleasing to God. <laughs> so, God found a way. And uh, the way He chose to do it is 2 Corinthians 5.17. And let's just go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And you, you probably know this verse by heart by now, but I'm going to read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's who you are. We took most of this teaching today to show you who you really were and to come to one conclusion. The only solution for you was death. You could not be fixed. I could not be fixed. I needed to die. God found a way for us to die without spending eternity in hell or going back into non-existence. I feel sorry for people who think that when their body dies, they will cease to exist the way they did before they were born. That's not true. We're eternal beings. We're going to be here forever. We're going to be alive forever. We're going to be human personalities forever and ever. Man, I got a new series and we're going to get to it. It hasn't been released yet. It's called uh, Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. And the truth is, everyone lives forever. But not everyone has eternal life. And it's important that we know the difference. So you, you did not cease to exist when you died with Christ but because you were reborn. You were born again and you became then a new creation. And so important that we realize all things have passed away. The person you were has passed away. All things have become new. Man, that's powerful. So you did die. You had to die and you did die. You said, but I'm still here. Yeah, you've been born again. If you've accepted Jesus and what he's done, then you've been born again. You're a new person. The old person died and now you're a new creation. This is why that ha it happens invisibly. It happens in the spirit, in your spirit. It's not visible to the naked eye. You can't look at people on the, and that's what he says here in 1 Corinthians 5, 16. He says, we don't regard anyone according to the flesh. Why? Because if you look at people according to the flesh, you can't tell who's who. You can't tell a saved person from a sinner. You can't tell a righteous person from an unrighteous if you're just looking at them from the outside. But, but we know people after the Spirit and we must know ourselves after the Spirit. Because what happened to you happened invisibly on the inside. And it's, it must become real so that we can live in the significance of it. Without renewing our minds to what happened, we will continue to feel and look on the outside the way we did before we were saved. And it may have very little impact on our quality of life, on the decisions we make. But the more we begin to see what God did in us, and the more the new creation becomes a reality in our thinking, the more our, our, our behavior changes automatically as a result of that revelation. So uh, rather than Christians striving to try to do better and be better and trying harder to do right, we can take time and just look at what God did. Look at who we are. Look at who we were. And then see how, how did God do this how was he able to, to, to do this miracle in our lives? And it was all through Jesus. In fact, we're going to go through that in, uh, in, 
in future episodes, but we'll see how exactly how we died, what happened to us, and then, and then how did we become this new creation that we are. And then we'll take a look at the new creation and just see who is this new person that I'm in, and it'll blow your mind. Um, you're, you, God did not wait for you to try to become what He wanted you to be. That would have never happened in a million years, literally. In a million years, you would not have evolved into the person God wanted you to be. So He just made you that through Jesus Christ. He made you who He wanted you to be. Isn't that, isn't that liberating? In fact, I, let me give you just a preview to the next episode's teaching, and that's this. The new creation, the fact of the new creation, is the greatest evidence in the world that Almighty God can do what He determines to do on earth today. The fact that there's a new creation means that God found a way to do the impossible, that God would not be stopped, He would not be dissuaded, He would not give up, He did not turn His back on us. He found a way to make us what He wanted us to be. Maybe it didn't happen in the garden. It was thwarted, it was perverted, it was hijacked, it took a wrong turn. But through Jesus, He did what He determined to do. And the new creation, or you, are evidence that nobody can stop God from doing what God determines to do. And we're just fortunate that He wanted to do that for us. We're the recipients of His power and ability, and man, we'll spend eternity being grateful to God for what He did for us through Jesus Christ. Well, I, 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 we don't have time left, but we're going to get into that in the next episode. You don't want to miss that. So be with us. Get all this teaching. It'll bless you and help you. Until then, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Who you are and who you think you are may be two different things. In this series, you'll learn the biblical truth about who you are in Christ and radically change your opinion of yourself. To order your copy of this series, call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. I would like to ask you to consider partnering with this ministry. And I have to say, my partner base has changed my life. And I believe it was time for it. I believe it's ordained of God. And I believe there are people out there that God is speaking to and will speak to that He wants to stand with us. I can't do this by myself. And as I always say, I wouldn't want to. If you'd like to partner with us and have an investment in what we're doing in the world and watch what God does through this ministry in the next few years, I invite you to visit my website, go to the partner page. We have different ways and different levels of partnership. And if you don't want to partner monthly and you'd rather just write one check, we would accept that also. You can just multiply your monthly partnership by 12 and send one check and we'll give you all the benefits of partnership. We'd love to hear from you today. God's got great things in store for us and we'd love for you to partner with us and watch God work. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. Learn more at gregfritz.org.